Hello everyone, my name is Deline Sheesby. I'm an occupational health and safety practitioner. So recently the Department of Employment and Labour published the Occupational Health Safety Act Amendment Bill 2020 where there are many changes. Enforcement provisions have been strengthened. There is a simplification to the administrative system for issuing of fines and now the inspector is empowered to issue administrative fines. So when an inspector comes to your workplace and they find something wrong in terms of the act or even in terms of the regulations, they can immediately submit a case to the courts and recommend uh, prosecution. For example, if you don't have health and safety reps or you don't have a health and safety committee as per the requirements of section 17s, 18s, 19, 20, you know, structure is very important. Um, if there is no structure, then you should be taken to task. The Department of Employment and Labour will recommend a prosecution to the NPA. Um, they will consider it and let it go through their processes if they deem it necessary. That is one aspect. That does not fall away when the bill comes out. There is an addition to this legal framework which is followed when the Department of Employment and Labour inspection takes place and that's called the administrative fines. These administrative fines, fines are now found in this Schedule 2, as you can see on the screen now. There's a lot to Section 37, 37A through to 37F. Um, I have tried to abbreviate it as much as possible. Okay, so starting in the first column here, 37A, the administrative fines, um, in Section 37A, a written notice may be issued if you are in breach of the Act, um, and then a fine may be imposed, you know, a fine may be imposed instead of a criminal prosecution. So this written notice may be issued if you are guilty of an offence, and the amount prescribed on that offence or on that notice is the amount which would have to be paid. And of course, the paid, the amount that has to be paid would be paid to the um, to the DG of the Department of Employment and Labour, that is the Director General, um, and sections of the Criminal Procedures Act will be referred to. Then coming to section 37B, Criminal Liability, um, in which it says that if an employer, your CEO, your manager, agent, or even an employee may be found criminally liable if they have committed an offence resulting in death, permanent disability, or illness. Okay, so the CEO, manager, agent, or employer of that employee commits an offence if they omit to perform within the scope of their authority um, or employment. Then in section 37C, hindering or obstructing an inspector, okay, or failing to comply with the inspector's request is an offence. Also, it's an offence if you bribe, assault, to swear at or victimise your inspector. Preventing an inspection from entering the, uh, inspector from entering the premises is also an offence. Section 37D, furnishing false information, um, information, documentation, records, etc. Furnishing false um, information is an offence. 37E, failing to attend a meeting, inspection, investigation when summoned to do so is an offence. 37F, failing to comply with the provisions of this Act is an offence. Um, so if not meeting exem your exemption um, conditions, not producing information to the inspector, if or as and when required, willfully or willful false or incorrect information, um, presenting yourself as an inspector, um, tampering with evidence or tampering with persons giving evidence, trying to influence proceedings or findings, tampering with or misusing health and safety equipment or failing to use health and safety equipment in connection with plant and machinery, threatening, threatening the health and safety of any other person. These, these could all be offences, all of these offences which could be applicable to section of the Schedule 2. So, 
it would be a good idea to be familiar with the section to ensure your compliance. So Schedule 2 appears in Section 37 and for example an administrative fine fine can be issued for a number of different issues or non-compliances. So here we have Schedule 2 which is the table containing the administrative fines and as I mentioned previously this uh, schedule now appears um, uh, in Section 37. So just as an example as you can see here um, you would be issued a, a administrative fine or may be issued an administrative fine if you have not implemented a health and safety management system and that would be a 50,000 um, rand fine um, or you do not have health and safety reps or a committee when section 17, 18, 19 require you to do so um, or that the, the two monthly committee meetings are not taking place and so on and so on and you can see that these fines are, are quite extensive uh, quite, quite substantial 50,000 50,000 25,000 so it's a lot of money it would be better to just comply I think right so then continuing with the how much for non-compliance we have section 38 um, where we now have that schedule one the penalties this is the big one so in section 38 it says to us a person convicted of an offense in terms of a section indicated in schedule one may be sentenced to a fine or to imprisonment for a period not exceeding the period mentioned in the schedule one which we will have a look at in a few moments so let's have a look at some so some of the examples in schedule one schedule one examples big big numbers big fines five million five years imprisonment one million three years imprisonment even two hundred thousand and two years imprisonment and just to give you some examples like for example section eight section eight would be the duties of the employer and one of the most significant um, changes in section eight is now the introduction of the need to do your risk assessments and it clearly clearly defines what the requirements are so when we start looking at that i will be doing a short video on section eight very important for non-compliance of section eight five million um yeah going down there uh, section 14 which is the, the duties of the employees section 16 the big changes to your ceo appointment uh, appointments section 17 18 yeah so there are many changes now and this is very expensive you know what it's rather easier to just comply one or two slides back we looked at section 38 um, in which a person could be convicted of an offense in terms of schedule one um, and uh, with also with big fines in, in that schedule one so in this particular section i just want to draw your attention to to section 38 2 where in which it says a person convicted of an offense in terms of this act for which no penalty is otherwise or expressly determined may be sentenced to a fine of a hundred thousand or to imprisonment for a period not exceeding one year or to both so this is completely different to section 38 1 where they're now referring or they were referring to the fines and penalties coming out of schedule one i'd just like to mention um currently under section 43 it refers to the minister making certain types of regulations and when this bill comes in it's going to play a huge big role you'll see that when when there's a reference to um, 200 rand and you'll have a look um, at all of the current regulations and you find at the end of all of these regulations there's often these offenses and penalties of 200 fi rand fine and a couple of days imprisonment and so, and so on now that's going to fall away hey and um, if a contravention is ongoing um, it is seen as a continuous 
ongoing contravention and it can add up quite extensively, hugely. So in 4A, section 43 4A, it says to us the minister may by regulation specify offences in terms of this act in respect of which alleged offenders may pay a prescribed admission of guilt fine instead of being tried by a court for the offence. Then 43A, 43.4, sorry, says a regulation may in respect of any contravention thereof or failure to comply therewith prescribe a penalty of a fine to the maximum of five million or a penalty of imprisonment not more than five years or both. So there's a major change coming and obviously we are going to see challenges uh, which may take place of course but the world of health and safety changes it's all going to change when this bill comes out. Please, please take note of the information contained in this video and share it with your CEO or your GM or your managers or any other relevant employees. Don't get caught unawares. You know, ignorance is not bliss. So this video will be the third in the series. Not sure how many there will be. See how we go. Um, you can access the others via your YouTube links. On the screen you'll see that there's already one number reasonably practicable and section 16 proposed changes and the second one is regarding section 7 and health and safety management systems so for further information please don't hesitate to contact me um, on the details that you see at the bottom of the screen thanks very much you keep well you stay safe and bye for now